Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Ash Blonde tutorial um, where we're going to look at doing some of the straighter sections or the, the longer sections of hair that we've got. Um, so same pencils that we used in the previous um, video. So your Sambar Brown, your French Grey 50% your French grey 20% and your white for the highlights. Um, but we're just going to do um, basically the same, but just on a larger scale. So let's get this one happening. And I do want to go in a little bit, just so you can see. might have to do it in two sections all right we'll see how that goes first I'll just be aware that you can't see the whole bottom of the page so I'll have to move it as such all right so let me get my glasses on and get the sandbar brown nice sharp pencils and we're, we're going to be picking out a section so um, I think this one's a good one so we're going to go through and map out just a section that's larger than what we've been working with previously. I think this is a good one because it's got a little bit of a wave to it but it's relatively straight. Just mapping it out firstly. Okay, good. So if we go up the top and what we're doing, we're doing exactly the same as we have been previously. We're just going over the grey scale that Mariola has put in this illustration. So it's a firm, um, it's a, not a firm, um, it's a medium to light pressure that I'm using just as we go over that grey scale to start off with and remember what I said it's easy to do multiple layers but it's much harder once you've saturated the paper to add more more layers so you don't want to use a firm pressure because we want to build up the colour because we need the sandbar brown and the French grey 50% to make that ash colour that we're after. So it's really just going through. We've, we've got guidelines with this illustration, obviously. Mariola's done most of the heavy lifting by giving us the lines where the darkness is going to be. So I will pick out another illustration perhaps without the guidelines as well so that we can practice on that as well with our straight relatively straight hair it is fairly straight 
So I'll be on the lookout for, we'll go through my back catalogue of quite a few illustrations that I've got um, and just see if there's one that sort of will show you more of a straight hair perhaps without the guidelines that we've got so it's it's basically fairly free of anything in there and we can come up with something for that one so I'll have a bit of a look I'm always on the hunt for I've got a couple for the next couple of videos that I want to do but I'm always on the lookout for more to show you different techniques all right and then we're just finishing this off now just at the bottom and we're just going in the direction of the hair so the bottom here has got a bit of a curl so we're just following with our pencil with our strokes we're just following the direction of the hair no backwards or forwards like that I'm sure you all know that all right Sorry if this is going to make you a bit dizzy, it's just I can't, I want to be close enough so you can see the strokes, um, but it, it sort of impedes your view of the whole thing just because it, the hair's so long. Okay, so we've got our 50% French grey and as we did previously up here, we're just going to go back over the sandbar brown because those, the combination of those two pencils is going to create that ash colour that we're looking for in the ash blonde. And we can start to, I suppose, add the, the areas of um, light and dark, or we, where we, I can't even speak, um, where we want the shine to be. So I'm assuming there's going to be maybe a little bit in this section. And a little bit of, I'm going to take that right up to the edge, this one. Maybe in the middle section there's a bit of a highlight. We can always fill it in if I don't like it. I really do recommend that when you're doing anything, any of your, you know, any of your colouring of any illustration, even if you've finished come back to it the next day and just have a look with fresh eyes because you might just see things that working up close for long periods of time you're not able to see and then that way you'll be able to change them to suit what you're after I always do that. I've got probably, oh, it'd be over 20 that I've got on the go at the moment. And I just swap between what I feel like doing. So there's some that are, need skin colours put in. There's some that needs hair put in. And it's just what I feel like at the time. There's lots with everything done except for flowers or maybe butterflies or something along those lines that I just can't feel like I can tackle at the moment. <laughs> I will get to them, it's just they're not my favourite sort of things. Alright, just grazing the page with your 
your 50% French grey and you are <clears throat> almost breaking the sections that that long section into little sections where you've got light dark light dark just where they're because of the the way her hair is falling light would be hitting different areas of it and we'll just go down the bottom and just do the same it really is just a variation on the theme we're doing exactly the same things that we would be doing in a really small space say for instance you know a part of a plait all we're doing with this is just expanding that out into a larger area so we've got a little bit more freedom we're not constrained by a small area and then it just allows you to express yourself how you want it to sort of look I would suggest any any illustration any drawing any painting anything along those lines has dark and light in them because there's always going to be a light source even if for instance you you're doing I don't know something some illustration where it, it's quite dark it might be night or something along those lines <clears throat> there will still be a light source it might be the moon it might be a lantern and the reflections that you get off that will dictate where the light and the, and the dark sort of highlights what you're, you, you're doing so whether it's a face or whether it's I don't know a tree or a dragon or, or whatever it is so it's just fundamental that there's going to be light and, and shade think, yeah light and shade think of it like it light and shade even any photos if you've got you know some photos of yourself or a family or whatever study them study where the light source is coming from is it coming from you know where you're taking the photo with the light behind you um, so that the light's shining directly on your subjects was the light off to the left was it you know to the right was it behind and look at how different shadows are created on people's faces. It's a, it's a really good exercise um, to start to look at. And, and it's, it's more important when we, when we start getting into um, skin tones, where the shadows are on the face. Uh, now I've got my 20% uh, French grey and I'm just going through you know how I said that I was blending the ends of the two colours together preparing it for the white because white is very stark and I don't want the white to be the thing that your eye is mostly drawn to so if I can sort of blend a little bit then the white can blend into that as well and it won't be as stark all right so just moving down a little bit So 
So I think photos are a really good way of looking at your light source. Just studying if you want to do, um, if you mainly want to colour portraiture, uh, which is I, what I mainly do, then have a bit of a, a look through some photos, some old photos or some new photos if you, if you take them and have a bit, start to have a bit of a, an eye for where the light is and what shadows it creates on the face, on the hair, where's the hair the shiniest, things like that. Okay, so while I'm here, before I go down into the next section, I might grab the white. Oh, just finish this. Okay, and then as I said, the white, we'll just go into those sections that we've prepared. A little bit here and there's a big streak down there we might we might leave that we might not and we go over here and there is a little bit more of a one down here but this is the main the main one throughout the that hair piece okay so if we go down to the bottom now I've got my 20% again of the French grey and we're just rounding off those ends a bit Blending the colours a little bit together. It's sort of a medium pressure. It's not a firm pressure at all. Um, but it is a, enough of a pressure that you are actually blending the colours. So I'd say medium pressure. And then just... Down the bottom, I'm just going to do a few little strokes. Just in, I don't want any white at all on the ends. But we might leave this one here. We'll see how it all looks when I step back from it. Alright, so here's the white again. And then there's a little bit more through here and a little bit more here. All right, so if we look at that as a first layer, we do want to go over it again with the darker pencils <clears throat> but we have created um, light and, and shade throughout that, that whole section, okay? So um, we might, I might look at this and go, well, I don't, let's, let's, let's do the darker and then we'll, we'll see what comes of it. So we'll go back over with our sandbar to start off with. All right, so sandbar. 
And now I know where, where it all fits because I've mapped it out and we've done our first layer. Now I can start to look at it and go, okay, I want this area darker. I think in here is going to be darker. just where it hits her, the underneath of her plait. And then just blend that out. So this is near another section that's going to be quite fairly white. I'm just grazing the page a little bit just to add some pigment now. I can do some strokes if I feel like it. And really just creating where I see I want little little bits of interest little strands that are poking out that are slightly different in, in color to the surroundings and that's what this sort of white or, or highlighted section is it's it's just a perhaps a strand that that's sitting above the rest of it slightly or perhaps it's got a streak in it it's just those little bit of in, you know um, parts of interest that when you look at the picture when it's finished it just looks like um, it, it gives it its own individual individuality. Sorry, can't even say that. All right, so again, just down into this section, just going back over because I want to match what I did on the top, obviously, so that it all is the same colour and tone so that it doesn't look mismatched. Right, so it's coming together. And you can darken where you want to darken, which just means that you're putting a little bit firmer pressure on the pencil. So, for instance, I've gone a little bit darker in this section, a little bit firmer pressure. And just here. And I'm going to do the same down here. Just making it a little bit firmer pressure. So I just want that darker. And it's just one layer at a time. If you're wanting a really um, dark ash blonde, you might do three or four different layers. When you think about it, we are going back over areas quite a few times, even just with our strokes here. So we are laying down more pigment each time. So 
So it is almost a medium ash blonde anyway, more than a light. Okay, just into this area here. Now this curl part, I want this a little bit darker. Because it's sitting behind this area here. Okay, good. Now we need to go over again with our 50%. And it's really just taking out... any of the gold but there's not really too much gold in the samba as I said previously it's more of a neutral brown but I'm just adding that grey into the mix so that we've got ash instead of a you know, a neutral blonde or a gold blonde. Right, just into those areas a bit more. And then I'll go down the page. And I'm just really using a very light pressure over those light areas. And a little bit firmer as I come into the darker areas where I've already laid down quite a bit of the sandbar. We can move down to the bottom. And the end curl that we're looking at here. Let's have a bit of a, a stand up. Might actually go out a little bit so we can maybe see the whole area. <clears throat> and then I'll just see if there's any, any areas that I might just want to fill in a tad more. But I want to keep some of these lighter strokes because I think it does add that interest to the to my colouring it's just not all flat you've got areas as I said of interest but if you don't like them fill them in it's quite easy to fill them in okay yeah so I'm pretty happy with that so let's, let's go into more I might go into, I'm just going to dark, oops, oops, go on, breaking the chair. All right, so perhaps into this section. Now this is going to be quite dark, this section. There's really not going to be any highlights in it, so 
I'm going to go sandbar brown and then my French grey, 50%. And that just helps that section recede, okay? Because it's behind this section and this section obviously sits over the top. So no light's going to be hitting it. So it's going to be darker. Just like, if you look at this section in here, That's going to be another section. Of darkness. Just the two colors together. Where you where you want them basically. OK, so if we can continue down with this one. I will go into around this part of her pony and go out and then down. Now there are quite a few smaller sections through here. So we'll just do them one at a time. Just little strokes. This section in here again because we want it to recede. It's going to be the darkest section of all of them. I can fill that in right now with the grey as well, the 50% grey. And we can say that's another area that we've finished basically. Yep. All right, sandbar brown. And just pressing a little firmer here because I want this to this section is above this section so I want this to recede more but then we've got a section of look at it that way we've got a section where there's some shine but it still is behind this upper section that we've just done so just move it slightly again so you guys can see all right so just it's almost a, a section that we're used to, okay, so not very big. But then it comes down. Into this area. So we'll just, at the moment, follow the, the strokes that Marielle has got, the grayscale. Just with the sandbar. And I think that this is going to be another section in here that I want dark. <coughs> Excuse me. So just putting the grey over the top now. I think this one too, I want it 
want it to be a little bit darker than it was. a couple of strokes either side of it and then I'll get my 20% I'll just finish this area just a little bit and a tad of white don't want a whole heap of white I'll just put my 50% over that again and it's just trialing those areas. So you want a little bit there, up here, what, what sort of section do I want, you know, to add a little bit more lightness to. So I've gone over that with the sandbar, so let's go with our 50% grey bring that down a little bit more I don't want too much of a highlight in there so just little tiny little strokes and now let's bring out our 20% Twenty percent there, and say, do I want? It? I don't, don't think I want any white in this section, but I might just put a little bit here. And just to finish it off, I just want to darken that area up a little bit more. A couple more strokes of the sandbar. And a couple more strokes of the 50% grey. So you can really take it section by section. Back to the sandbar. And just look at every section individually and sort of say to yourself, okay, what light do I want in there do I want any highlights do I want it to be darker just remembering that the fundamentals which are there are some sections that are going to be over others so if a section is under another section it stands to reason it's going to be darker and you can always darken those up when you re-look at them so if you come back to it the next day and you say okay yeah there are areas in there that I do want to make a little bit darker so it's they recede more so that the sections that are lighter come to the surface and they're highlighted if all of my babbling makes sense there. You can see I've made pretty well a section of my own there just with the sandbar. So this was continuing down here but I've, I've just decided I'm going to cut it off there and just create this little section in there and then I can get my 50% and just go over that just adding a little bit more pigment And a little 
bit through here and then we've got our highlight so our 20 percent And I don't want a whole heap of white, but I will have a little bit of white through there. Sandbar again. Just to meld it all together. And our grey to top it off the 50 so it's section by section <clears throat> you can follow the illustration but as as you go you might find that there are sections just like that one that I basically wanted to create where I just cut it off I didn't want I suppose I'm, I'm thinking that this section in here is going to be a new section that I'm going to do. So Samba might actually, it's an extension of that basically. So just Samba. Mapping that out. There's the ends of it there. I've got my grey. And just my 20% just blending a little bit and then do I want any white I'll have a little bit there and maybe a little bit there and I think that let me just go back into this area a little bit is a good continuation of, of that section there. But I probably would want to come back, say, tomorrow or whenever I get back around to it and just have a relook at those sections. Um, and then this one down here. Oh, we might just do here. This is just the Samba, just mapping it out. But you can see in here how we've got the hair going in different directions. So I want to follow the direction of the hair so I've got that one going that way and in here I've got a little bit going that way a little bit going the other way and obviously this section here on top I think that whole section here is going to be quite dark, 50% again. So 
because it's it's quite dark because it's under a lot of the these sort of sections here and if you make a boo-boo don't worry about it you can as I've just done I made a little bit of a mess of that so it's become part of this section now <laughs> And that's how you make it your own, basically. Because there's just little sections that you'll change as you go through. So let's look at doing a little bit of white there. And we'll just stand back for a second and have a bit of a look. All right, so that's, oops, that's coming together okay so i think that's about all my ipad is going to handle i'm sorry guys that i'm not able to do much more but i think it gives you an idea of what we're trying to look at so it's just a section at a time think about where your darkness is going to be because that's going to be receding back because you've got sections that are standing over it you can create little sections yourself within that um, and you can go from there. So the next video, hopefully, fingers crossed, my video recorder is going to be up and running and I'm going to know how to use it. And um, we can have an uninterrupted video next time. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope that gives you um, some confidence in doing some longer sections of hair. And I'll be on the lookout for some other illustrations so we can practice a little bit more. Okay, bye guys.